Hello everyone and welcome back to Humble Acres. My name is Jordan and today we're going to be working on my 1962 Ford Falcon. When I started doing regular videos on this YouTube channel, this is the car that I started with. So um, the project was putting this engine in here. I put this engine in here. This is out of a Lexus LS400. That's a 1UZ V8. So basically a Toyota V8 engine is what I put in here. And yeah, that was pretty much the whole project. And it's honestly been a great car. Um, it's been, it runs really good. Um, it has a Toyota Supra five speed manual in it. Um, it has the pedals in it. it. It was originally an automatic. So the pedals are out of a Honda Civic. Um, the rear end is a, um, Ford 8 inch out of a Ford Explorer. It has a limited slip or posi uh, differential in it. I had uh, it shortened or narrowed, I guess. So there's a lot that I had to do with this to get it to work right. Because basically every component on here is new, um, at least the drivetrain. The front suspension I completely redid. I think that's actually where I started the videos was uh, redoing the front suspension. I had already had it cut out, I think, and I was, maybe I had it welded in too. I don't really remember, but it's a, like a Mustang two style front suspension. So yeah, there's been a lot of work done with this car, but every year I try to do a little bit more cause it never got fully finished. Um, I basically got it so it could run and drive and I just started driving it cause that's what you do. So it hasn't had rear brakes the entire time it's been running and driving, which is great for doing burnouts, but not great for stopping. So I do have the rotors on here already, which those rotors were brand new, but now they're super rusty. So we may have to take those off and just like wire wheel them or something just to shine them back up again. They should be fine. They're nice and flat at least. So. Um, I've changed the exhaust like three or four times now because it rattled or well, the first time it was there, it was sitting too low to the ground. So I'd hit it on everything and then it was rattling and I didn't like that. And then it was falling off because I didn't have it hooked on there good. And I had it straight duels most of the time until this last time I switched it to, uh, both headers meet into one and then come out the side right here and it has a glass pack right in there too. So this actually sounds the best of all of them for sure. Uh, it sounds really smooth. You can see there, I got a rubber hanger on it right there. And then we got the glass pack and then it splits right there. Yeah. And then it just crosses over to the other side and then that side goes up. And then there's V bands that hold it on to the uh, manifolds up there. So yeah, that's the exhaust setup and it sounds, it sounds really good right now. So I, I really like that. Um, but yeah, today I want to try, I, the whole reason that doesn't have rear brakes, it would have had rear brakes if I had not messed up, but the uh, brackets, which you can see the, for the calipers are right down here and right here. And I put them I put them on the wrong sides. This bracket is supposed to be on the other side and the other side is supposed to be on this side. So right now, if I try to put the caliper on, it actually interferes with the leaf spring back there. So there's no way to do it. So I need to switch it so the caliper is like up on top and then I'll have enough space to actually put it in there. So that's what we gotta do. The whole, the whole reason I didn't change that before is you have to drain all the diff fluid to pull the axles out and I didn't want to have to put new diff fluid in it, but I finally bought some more diff fluid. So we're just going to replace that, which I probably could have just drained it and then filled it back up with the same fluid, but I don't really like doing that anyway. So now we're going to get it jacked up, pull the wheels off, pull the axles out, do all that stuff. And hopefully we can get these calipers on. I'm gonna have to go find the calipers. <laughs> I'm not, they were staying on my workbench for the longest time, but I think I finally moved them. I gotta go find them. They're in a box somewhere. And then I need to make uh, brake lines, which I don't actually have the stuff to make the brake lines right now. So I'll probably have to go buy some brake lines. 
but I want to get the calipers mounted at least so then I have a lot more motivation to finish it if once I can get a couple more parts so I really just want it to be a little safer right if my front brakes go out I just have no brakes and that's not good it'd be nice to have a backup I don't even have a parking brake in this because it obviously isn't original so it's hard to figure out how to get that to work so enough blabbering let's do something now All right, so we need to take the stiff cover off here. Getting somewhere. There we go. Oh, you gotta love the wind. <laughs> Looks like it's still really clean though, so that's a good sign. Oh, it does look like I just used a paper gasket. Huh, sealed really good. I need to rotate this to uh, where we go. Cause that needs to come out. There should be like a set screw or something. Oh yeah, right here. I gotta take that screw out. I don't know. It's either an eight millimeter or a five sixteenth. Well, we gotta put it in gear. It's in gear, so hopefully we can break this free. All right, that's tight. should come out. You gotta go put it in neutral again. Spin this. There it fell out. Alright, that works. Let's spin this and it should just fall out all the way. Should be able to push this in. They're both pushed in. Now there's a little clip in there you have to get out somehow that one's out maybe yep so it looks like looks like the letter C got it All right, now we should just be able to pull the axles out. Ta-da. Stay there. So now what we need to do is take these four nuts off here and then this whole back plate should come off. All right, so the last time we left off, I had just gotten all this stuff out. So I put it all back together and I couldn't find the calipers that went on here. I searched for about four or five hours that day and I could not find them anywhere and it was driving me insane. Because for the longest time, they were sitting on my workbench right here. And then one day I decided, oh, I'm probably not gonna get to this. So I need to just move them off here so I have more room. And then I, I had no idea where I put them. And I searched so long and it turns out they were in that tote right there the whole time. So I have them here now. I found 
both the calipers and I found all of my other stuff for this car too. So I had bought a proportioning valve for the rear brakes because I don't want them to lock up and stuff. So I have that we can put on. I found brake line. Um, I have a remote oil or a remote oil adapter that I was going to put on, but I never did. Um, I found the brake pads for the rear calipers. Um, this is an adapter for the remote oil thing and stuff. So just a bunch of fuel lines and original height knuckles. Found a ton of stuff, which was nice, but I could not find the calipers and that was driving me insane because the cheapest ones I could find were $80 on eBay. And then like anywhere locally, it was $150 because half that cost was a core charge. But if I didn't have old ones, I was gonna have to pay that. So it was just really annoying. And other thing is, is I'm pretty sure I rebuilt these ones too. And then I painted them all up nice. So these ones are like brand already. So anyway, they should work. So we're going to put those on there. And then um, we're also, we need to, we need to shine these uh, discs up some. I'm just going to get my wire brush out and go around them a little bit. Try to get all that rust off there. And then we'll put the calipers on. And then we're going to need to deal with the... Uh, brake lines, so I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna route it. I do have some clips and stuff that we should be able to figure out a way to get in there I probably don't have enough ends though. Borsching valve came with ends for that But I don't think I have any more of those so I might need to run to town and uh, Pick up some of those ends But other than that we should be good another thing I have these sitting over here which don't pay attention to this because I was messing with it before it was dry. But these are like, I think they call them like traction bars or something for the rear leaf springs. So I was going to put these on. I painted them all up. They're originally yellow. I painted them. But my leaf springs on this car are so narrow. And these brackets are really wide. And they actually are going to interfere with the rims. Because the leaf springs on this car... Are really far out so yeah I really can't have anything sticking out that far so I need to figure out a way to try to get these to work I wish I had like narrower u-bolts because that's kind of what's keeping me from just drilling some new holes in here and then I could just cut the brackets off so I might go try to find some shorter u-bolts or I could just cut these and narrow them and then weld them back together that would probably work too that's just a lot of effort that i don't really want to deal with right now so anyway let's uh worry about the brakes first those traction bars aren't the biggest deal i'm not really doing burnouts anymore i tried doing um another burnout with it you see the burnout at the end of pretty much every video i do with this car that was the very first one i did and it worked out perfectly but every time i tried to do it after that um, the rear axle would just hop really really bad and I think it like twisted and stuff too. So those are supposed to help with that, but I'm not doing any burnouts because I have brand new tires on it now. So <laughs> I'm probably not gonna be doing that anyway, but I bought those just for fun. I think they look kind of cool too. So it, they probably help a lot, but I need to figure out how to get them to work on here. So anyway, back to the brakes. All right, so my plan I'm gonna do is take this, put it on here and just kind of go around. It will make it fine. That should probably be plenty fine. I mean, they're still nice and smooth, so. The other side was actually rubbing on the back plate, so Probably won't even have to do anything with that. <laughs> I do need to fix the back plate though. Then these are actually the parking brake. They go on the inside. They're like a drum type parking brake. So those I had all together and it looks like they've stayed nice and clean. So it should be good there. So yeah, it should be good. We'll put this back on, do the other one. We'll be good to go. So you want the bleeder screw at the top. So I know this is this side. So that's how they go on. But I need to put the pads on first. So we got this pad with the little prongs. That one, I assume, goes inside there, which that is loose. 
Uh, I figured that would probably be a little tighter than that. So these look like they clip over this. Yeah, those clip in good. All right, let's set this up here and see if it makes any better sense when we get it up here. Okay, so they have to hook in the top first, it looks like. Because they have a little notch on them and then they slide in the bottom. So I guess that will keep them from sliding. Honestly, they'll probably work. Let's get these bolted in. So this axle and calipers came off of a 97 Ford Explorer. Everything's metric. Wouldn't have guessed that. Alright, get the other one on. Hopefully this lighting is okay. It, on the camera it looks terrible, but... Some more parts for the Falcon here. I got factory style rear rubber hoses, or brake lines for the Ford rear end that's in the car. So these are the factory ones out of a 97 Ford Explorer. So I think there is a mounting hole for these two spots on the axle. So that should all work out fine. And then it has a splitter block built into the line. So I should be able to just mount these up. And, the, and these ends, I wasn't sure how I was going to do. But yeah, I, they're just built right into this. So, which I just noticed this one doesn't come with crush washers of course so that's good this one did There's some taped to it so that's convenient but anyway so these were the lines I was worried about so I should be able to just tie right into these using the factory stuff so I think I'm gonna get these put on the car and then see where these mount up here I'll probably have to like clean up some threads and then find a bolt to fit in there. But get that all situated and then we will start making our metal line. So I went and got some fittings for the metal line. I got some here and then I have more over here. Let's get these lines on and then we will go from there. So yeah, I have this going up here and you can see it fits right in this factory mount for the original brakes. It's the exact same size and everything, but this hose is way too tight. And it's also just tight back here, so there's... Uh, we're just not going to be able to have that work, but... That would have been perfect, though, if this was just a little longer. I mean, we can cut that bracket off and move it, but... I don't know if we're going to be able to move it enough to make it work with this, though. Unless we, like, put it up there or something. I mean, we could pull it and maybe put it like up here or something. That'd give more slack in the line. And then these brackets here are for the parking brake, which I haven't figured that out yet either. I was tempted to buy the Ford factory parking brake stuff, but I don't know for sure if that's going to work or not. If we like just put a bracket right there for it, that would probably give the caliper enough movement. And then we just move that bracket to where that can reach. And then this one, we basically just do the same thing and put a little bracket here for this one. And then we just put a metal line in between the two. And then put a metal line from this up to the front. And that would basically be it. I guess I'm gonna weld some little tabs up or something and then go from there. Alrighty, so I got all the brackets welded on. This one is the one that holds the brake hose onto the body. It used to be right here. I cut it off, moved it to here, and that should work out fine. It should have enough slack. This hose will go right in here-ish somehow like that. And then I, I still need to get a clip to put behind there to keep it in place. On this side, you can see, so the hose is up there. And on this side, 
we'll have this here and a bolt will go through there and we have plenty of slack now for the suspension to go up and down side to side if it needs to and then on this side we have the same thing just a shorter hose so it'll go right on like that and then we will have a solid steel line go from this side over here to this port right here so I still need to make that but that's how that'll work and then we just need to plumb from that hose right there up to the front somehow. I mean, it's easy enough to plumb it, but I don't know how exactly I'm gonna mount it yet, so. It's always fun welding above you because I got quite a few burn marks on my arms. Of course, I'm wearing short sleeves because, you know, that's what you do when you're welding, so. All right, so we got these brake lines mounted here. You can see they're bolted on nice and tight. I got these snugged down on the calipers here. See over here, we got the same thing. So now I'm working on the metal line going in between the two. And I just happened to find this bracket that I must have saved. And it actually mounts right on the top of the axle here. There's a hole where this bolt threads into. And it holds the brake line on one end. And then the breather hose, I'm pretty sure, is supposed to go on the other side. Which I don't even have one on here right now. Because, you know, I don't drive this in water anyway, so what does it matter? But So I'm going to put this on, and then, um, yeah, we'll have something to be able to clip the brake line into. Which, there are clips right in front of the sway bar bracket here. But on this side, this one ended up being too close, so I'm not going to be able to bend it around there. Um, on this side, I am going to bend it up and around here, and then I'll be able to clip it in that uh, clip right there that's still on the axle. But this will just add one more thing on the top, which, funny thing is, I was going to just make one of these and put it up there, but I have the original one, so. Alright, so I got my brake line here. I already got my double flare on the one side with a fitting. So that'll go in here, and then we just need to kind of just bend it up through the bracket here, back down through this bracket, and then bend it and go into here. So really not too bad. I'm really hoping I have enough line to make it all the way up to the front as well with this, but we'll have to see. Remember, this isn't a show car, so keep your comments pleasant because I don't have a bending tool either, so I am just bending this by hand. We're just going to get this started. And that's not the right fitting, so... Awesome. Is this side correct at least? Nope. All right. Awesome. Well, it turns out when I was at the parts store, the guy gave me three of, of the bigger fittings and then one of the smaller ones. So I do have two more of these size ones that I had from before when I was doing this. So I'll have enough at least for um, to get this line done. And then I'll have enough for one more fitting, but yeah, I'll, I'll need to go get more. He gave me the wrong ones apparently, which I don't know if he really gave me the wrong ones because I didn't actually know what I needed at that point. So anyway, hopefully this will fit in here. Should thread in now. Yes. All right. So that's correct. Which I'm going to probably tighten that down too so I know it's in there good. And pretty much like that is what we need. So we have our little cutting tool. This thing works really good for this. And a little bit and cut it where we need it, about there, yeah, rotate it around, tighten, rotate, tighten, rotate, tighten, and break off, like so, I don't think we're going to have enough of that to actually get to the front, all right, now, don't put your 
uh, brake line fitting on because you'll want to uh, make this flange flare it real quick and then notice that you don't have it on there and then cut it off again and then put it on and then you'll have it done right so that's what we're gonna do all right I lied I'm gonna put it on there first time because I just don't want to have to deal with it <laughs> but you haven't worked on brake lines until you forget to put that on once or twice so this is what I'm using as a de deburring tool it works just fine good now I got this fancy little tool here for making a double flare um, the old-fashioned kind here I'll, I'll show you I have one so this is the old-fashioned kind you clamp your hose in here you put this on there you flare it and then there's another little adapter you put in the hose and then you flare it with that for the double flange these are junk they don't work and they work for a single flare just fine but for a double flare they are garbage so I spent $50 and I bought this one it's made only for thir 3 16 inch line um, but that's all this car is and that's all I'll probably ever work on but this works so nice and it's so much better and it's compact so you can do it like underneath the car they make a way fancier version of this but it's kind of bulky I probably would buy it but it's also very expensive I think it's like $200 for it so this is cheap and it works so well this is a Titan brand I think Eastwood makes one I think Eastwood might have made the original kind this is probably a knockoff version of it but whatever this is 50 bucks they're all the same ish price but this one this works really well so how it works um, there's some little lube here you got to put on the end of it just put a little dab on there so it uh, doesn't wear the tool down as fast then you loosen these two screws you slide it in here and you slide it in until you can see it in this little hole which I could take it off the car but why do that so I want to tighten these down a little bit and then you put this uh, little tool in the end of it here it's a little stop basically and then basically that's just there so you slide this hose in all the way until it hits this and then you know it's in the right spot so then you tighten these down yeah this these are 10 millimeter tighten these down to clamp the hose in there the other nice thing about this clamp is it doesn't um mess up the uh, hose the, on the other one it has like uh almost like threads on there and it clamps on there tight but then it also messes up the hose and it also doesn't hold it tight enough so this one works really good though so once that's done loosen this take that out then you have this so the one goes in first so this goes in first and then this goes in second so the OP1, slide that in there, thread it in until it stops, and then you basically just tighten this until it bottoms out. And this was a 17 millimeter. Just do this until it doesn't go anymore. And that's bottomed out. Now you just break it loose, and you can take it out by hand basically. And then you flip it over and this will flatten it out and make it nice thread that all the way in and then tighten it till it's bottomed out and that's bottomed out loosen it and it'll come out all the way and once you got that you can loosen these almost there maybe <laughs> there we go Loosen it that far, get over the flange, 
and voila, you have a perfect double flare fitting. Flare, flange, flitting, whatever. I bent that a little bit. There we go. Now we can just bend that back and thread it into place. And we should be good to go. That's tightened down. Now we can make sure this is all where we want it. I'm going to bend this a little bit here. But it's all held in place. Everything's in place. So that's it. We got everything in place now. So this back one is all done. Now we just have to get the one running to the front and then deal with that. But I really don't think I'm going to have enough hose and I don't have en enough fittings. So, yep. All right, so right now I did realize that um, this brake line that I have is going to be long enough to reach all the way up here. So that's good. Um, I went and got some more fittings, so I have enough fittings to finish this now. But I was trying to figure out where I want to place this proportioning valve. And where I kind of think I'm going to go is just kind of up right here. Because this area is extremely crowded in this car because the engine is so close here. So this stuff is just, it's all packed in here and the clutch slave cylinder is, or the clutch master cylinder is just wedged in there. So it's just, it's very difficult to add more stuff right here. I really wanted to put it right here, but there's no way I'm going to be able to bend that tight of a corner and have that work and it also makes the other side very tight to get the line attached all right well as you can see i have changed what i did a little bit so you can see i lowered it down because the high point should be right here so i just made it go down and i can still adjust this i mean it's not something i need to be able to adjust a lot once i get it set it can stay where it's at so this is all tightened up, nothing's rubbing on anything. So now we're gonna add the line from here to the back, which we only have one more fitting to put on. And then we just have to tie everything now, make sure it's not gonna hit anything and it's secured good enough. A little overview here. We got the front all put in from here down into the proportioning valve and then out and down. And then under here, you can see it goes into this a uh, little holder here, under here, and then we have the same holder here, it's also holding the fuel line. And then it comes all the way through that one, and that one, and then it kind of curves around, and then into this little hose here, or this fitting here, and then comes over the axle there it's got plenty of flex in it comes into here and then goes to each caliper all right i got the rear brakes bled i'm pretty sure got all the air out that i could see anyway um, i press on the pedal and the calipers are moving i don't see any leaks anywhere so i think it's time to put the uh, uh, wheels back on and take for a little spin and see what happens I'm probably going to need to adjust that proportioning valve. Um, I did read that you can't actually lock out the rear brakes with that valve. It only goes, I think at max, it can restrict it 57% is what the little instruction booklet said. So I was a little wrong on that. I can't actually turn off the rear brakes, which is kind of a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. So, um... I did turn it in a little bit to add more pressure while I was bleeding it to let more fluid through. So I think I just need to go take for a drive, slam on the brakes and see what happens. All right, so we're at our testing facility here. So I'm going to just drive at like maybe five or 10 miles an hour, slam on the brakes and see what wheels lock up first. We want the fronts to lock up before the rears. That is the goal. So right now I have the proportioning valve all the way open. So it should give full power from the master cylinder, brake master cylinder to the rear wheels. So let's see what happens. It's 
actually kind of hard for me to tell from in the car. It feels like both the front and the rear are locking up at the same time. So I'm going to have to look at the footage and change it a little bit, I think. But let's look at the footage and see what happened. All right, well, after watching the video, I could see that both of the front and the rear tires were locking up at the same time. So I'm going to need to adjust that proportioning valve. I looked at the camera while I was out there and I couldn't actually tell on the video. So I'm going to need to adjust it a little bit, but at least they're working. So that's a plus. Let's go for a little drive.